Alrighty. And so many, many times before I have shown the iPad and I've shown a video of how it's radioactive and I've not been able to figure out why and like a billion times now I've said, oh, I'll test it with gamma spectroscopy and no, and I say this often and never seem to get around to doing it. Well, I finally did it again today. Uh, I've tried it with my big uh, detector before. I uh, got potassium as a possible result. Uh, today I built a kind of a ghetto lead testing chamber around this and I used the polymaster here. The polymaster was to determine what the problem was. And I think I figured out what the actual isotope is. Uh, the isotope in question that I think, this is a guess, let me go down here to it, is potassium 40. I can't say this for sure, but I think that it's potassium 40. Now, potassium 40 um, has a primary gamma energy of, um, I've got a shaking camera here of 1,461 kilotron volts with a branching rate of about 10%. Of course, we all know that. And so we expect to see a peak very, very strong here that at around 1,461 uh, keV. Anyway, so, and it's mostly a beta emitter. You can see the betas right here. Those are the betas the beta energies, and betas of course are beta continuums, they're not a set energy, they're a, well they actually are technically a set energy, but when we see them they aren't a set energy, and that's kind of a complicated thing. And it's this Gorilla Glass, I think, that's my guess, because Gorilla Glass, this stuff, is made with potassium. And the potassium, it's it's kind of an odd glass, apparently it's, it's an aluminum silicate, like a ruby. For example, like this is a ruby right here, see? And this ruby is a uh, aluminum silicate, the same as a sapphire. Ruby and a sapphire are the same thing. They're both corundum. The only difference is that the ruby has chromium in it, which is what makes it red. This stuff right here has the same basic sort of chemical structure, but it also has potassium in it. And I think that that's what it is that I'm actually detecting with my polymaster. So anyhow, I took this in and tested it for an hour and removed the background from it for an hour. Uh, here's me testing it, and here's my very inconclusive results. And let me just point out that this is nearly, this is very low in radioactivity, and it's nearly a pure beta emitter, whatever it is. I think it's potassium. And I don't have any valid evidence that would prove it to be potassium, but I'll show you why I think it's potassium. So here we go. Okay. I did this sort of ghetto, as you can see. I can't use my normal testing chamber because the detector that fits in it normally is, well, way too big to fit inside of this construct here. I've got the polymaster underneath. I have the uh, thing right here that's detecting it. And basically, I stacked lead around here, and it looks like I just finished a background. Um, oops, stop. And let's see now what is in this stupid thing. Oh my god, that goes super duper sensitive, doesn't it? Alrighty, so I ran the um, Polymaster for about an hour. This is what I ended up with. This is in, um, is this in linear mode. There we go. We're in linear mode, and this is 37 kiloelectron volts all the way up to 3.484 uh, million electron volts. And here are all the energies. Most of this is background, and I'll show you why I know that in just a minute. Like, all of this stuff right here is all background. I couldn't tie any of these peaks to anything coming from the sample, really. And they're going to be in most of all background. I was looking for some stuff over here. Um, that's, again, probably background. That should be about 609 kV, plus or minus. So this has shifted a little bit here. And I notice that there's a pretty good expanse right here. You notice how this goes up? But let me switch this up logarithm if you see this whole area right in here that's around the annihilation peak at 511 keV and that usually tells you that there's a higher energy photon in play and then we go over here see this whole area see how the whole it's not just these little peaks this whole area is completely raised and it's raised disproportionately to other things around it and that's right centered at nearly see centered is right on the uh, 16 uh, sorry 14.61 keV range it's pretty close it's ballparked a little bit because there was a lot of temperature fluctuation going on, but you see how this whole area is raised up here? What this is, 
is probably potassium. Let's see if we can zoom in on it a little bit. See the whole area is completely raised up. Now if we go to a linear view, it should look a little different. Let me go to linear view, zoom out, menu, linear. Now in linear view, you see it doesn't look like that. It's kind of a clump. Sorry, the, the linear, yeah. In linear view, it's kind of a clump. And the reason is, is that first off, the CSI TL detector, the little tiny one, is not very good at, with potassium because potassium is so high in energy. It doesn't do high energy stuff very well. And second off, it's only a branch rate of 10%. So only 10% of what I detect even would, would hit the detector at all. And of that, only about 4 or 5% would be detected. And as anybody who's ever taken a Geiger counter to potassium chloride salt knows, a very small amount of potassium chloride salt uh, is reasonably well detected by the Geiger counter, but the gamma rays from it are not because once you cover up the beta it's usually nearly blind to it with the uh, detector and that follows what everybody's seen so far with this there is not enough statistical proof to prove it trust me I put this in spreadsheets already um, I pulled out all kinds of uh, uh, data from it and I've been going through the data trying to find it and I cannot I've got standard deviations all the way up and down here I can't find any proof of it so at this point, I can't say uh, uh, for sure that that's what it is, but I think it's potassium. Let's just double check that. That's right around, switch to energy. It's right around the 219, 220-ish, 218, somewhere in there. And if you look back here, it's probably pretty low. Yeah, see? There's not even a standard deviation from the norm going on. So I would say reasonably that it's potassium. But I would also say that I cannot scientifically say it's potassium because I haven't any valid proof. I would call this a supposition that it is potassium based on what I see. But I will say that the it is very likely that whatever it is is a beta emitter, not an alpha emitter. And whatever the beta emissions are, are very low level. You notice you don't see a, uh, the x-ray isn't from, caused from Bremster lung from a uh, beta continuum. That's probably a little bit of what that is, but not very much. And even when we remove everything from it, that's my background, by the way, in case you were curious. That's what the background looks like. It looks nearly the same, but a lot less potassium. Oops, energy. See, almost no potassium. And then when we remove the background completely from it, you still get a reasonable uh, oops, potassium peak right here. See a little potassium peak? switch to linear logarithmic. Now I guess linear is the best. I wrote some software that removes the background from it. It's still a little choppy. I need to give it a three-point smooth. You get this peak right here though and that's nearly on for uranium so I'm not sure what that's all about. Although I need to look some of these up and double check that none of these are the result of it but I, I don't see anything in here that's detectable as being a particular thing. So Anyhow, I'm going to call potassium again. This is Tom from anti-proton.com, and oh, one last thing before I go. Oh, and by the way, if you actually like this piece of software right here, which I think is, oh, oh, I think it's absolutely wonderful. The software lets you move around, and you can check out the whole periodic table of elements, move down all the isotopes that exist and everything like that, from uranium to tritium and so on. It's called iChart Nuclide, and I'll put a link, if I can, in the details because um, this information is freely available on the internet, but it's a pain in the butt to actually find. And this little app has it all together. Anything you could think of, you can click on it, and it'll have like all of its gamma energies and everything about it. This is absolutely probably my most favorite app ever created. And it would be a pain in the butt for me to have to do all this without it. So, there you go.